Look around Bladen County and you won't find any landmarks, monuments, or souvenirs honoring George Henry White, one of the first black men elected to Congress in North Carolina back in the late 1800s. Not even here, in Rosendale. This is where White was born a slave in 1852, but you won't find any signs telling you that here or that he left Rosendale at 17 to pursue his dreams. It's something Dorothy Bryan, a historian in New Bern, calls a mistake. But even though he left, you still honor a person's home, and I cannot understand why those people have not awakened to a native son's achievements. It's here in New Bern where George Henry White spent most of his formative years. After he graduated from Howard University with a law degree, he came here, he founded a few schools, he became a principal, and even built this house here for his family. His hand, his history, his influence is indelibly etched in Eastern North Carolina and in New Bern. Bernard George impersonates White as a hobby. He will rise up one day and come again. I like to bring the man alive. George White was elected to the North Carolina House of Representatives as a Republican in 1880. This was shortly after the Reconstruction period where blacks were free but still considered second-class citizens. Jim Crow law still plagued society, preventing blacks to share equal rights with whites. George White pushed to get more money for black schools. Five years later, White was elected to state senate. But it was between 1896 and 1901 that White made history. He was the only black American elected to serve in U.S. Congress. He represented the predominantly black second district in eastern North Carolina, a huge accomplishment considering no other black American would serve in Congress until 1928. That's nearly 30 years later. He was a one man in NAACP. So uh, when you consider that, when you can consider the servile uh, condition that black people were in and then you have a black man who's elected to Congress, that's, that's really major. Brian says that's what sparked her interest in white. How did he get elected with, you know, with not any serving at that time? Brian says briefly after the Reconstruction period, Republicans and populists fused together, which led to some political success for blacks. White was re-elected in 1898, but success didn't come easy for white in Congress. He was very vocal about racial discrimination. In 1901, he introduced the first anti-lynching bill. He proposed that lynching become a federal crime. White noted to Congress that out of the 109 people lynched, 87 were black. The bill never passed. He felt useless if he couldn't get bills through. Bryan says White introduced more bills to Congress, some focused on civil rights, but they never passed either. He should have had a more positive influence on the uh, Congress. But it seems that it was just like a voice in the wilderness, not being heard. By 1901, White felt his blunt and upfront views on equality for black Americans would not get him reelected. But he refused to, to leave bowed and bloody. That year, on January 29th, he gave his final speech to Congress. Everybody talks about that speech. Some say a speech that defined his career in politics and inspired new politicians today. This is perhaps the Negro's temporary farewell to the American Congress. But let me say, Phoenix-like. Phoenix-like. He will rise up someday and come again. White never returned to North Carolina. Instead, he moved north and urged other blacks to do the same. He founded a town called Whitesboro in New Jersey. In 1906, he settled in Philadelphia. He joined the NAACP, practiced law, and operated a commercial savings bank. Twelve years later, George Henry White died. He was 66 years old. He went on and did other things with his life and wound up as a very good person. A black leader remembered, honored, and quoted for being a champion for civil rights. But you would never know it, at least here in Rosendale, Bladen County, the place a man who made history was born. Tim Poyum, Fox 26 News.